The first stretch of Titans training camp is in the books. Titans players have an off day today, so we have assembled an all-star team to provide some insight into this past week. I'm Amy Wells, and this is Titans Today, fueled by Gatorade. Joining me today is voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, Titans radio color analyst, Dave McGinnis, and Titans senior writer, Jim Wyatt. Guys, we have lots to talk about from the first four practices of training camp. Mike Keith, I'm gonna start with you. Okay. Who do you think we should be talking about? I think we should be talking about the Titans defense, Amy. This group was number eight in the NFL last year. The entire secondary returns and they've added some pieces to a deep and talented group. The Titans, I think, are improved at outside linebacker where they needed to be improved. I like what they're doing in the defensive line, even though we haven't seen Jarrell Casey yet. I think top to bottom, even though they haven't been able to turn it all loose yet, we see a lot of upside for the Titans defense. Jim, what about you? Well, I think we should be talking about the offensive line because this is going to be the group in charge of opening up holes for Derrick Henry and for protecting Marcus Mariota. It certainly has been talked about early on. We've got Taylor Wan who's dealing with a looming suspension. Dennis Kelly's worked at left tackle. Jack Conklin's back. He's working at right tackle. We've seen a whole bunch of guys work inside. Whether it's Nate Davis, Jamil Douglas. We've seen Roger Saffold obviously to start to assert himself a little bit at the guard spot and Kevin Palmfield in the mix. A whole lot of things to sort through on the offensive line and that needs to kind of come to a head by the time camp ends. Coach Mack, who do you think we should be talking about? I'm going to uh, piggyback a little on Mike. I think we should be talking about some pieces of this defense that we don't talk about that are very, very significant for this multiple defensive front Dean Pease wants to run. Let's talk about Matt Diggerson. Matt Diggerson looks like a different player to me up front. You've got to have knockback players in this defensive front. It's a must to make a multiple defensive front work. And then let's talk about Brent Urban. Let's talk about a guy that's been in Dean Pease's system that is a big person up front, but he's not just a space eater. He's what I term a disruptor. He's a guy that can beat gaps. He's a guy that can beat blocks. He's a guy also that you can use to defeat those three-step drops because he's got length. Those are the two guys I think that are important pieces for this defense that don't get a lot of talk right now. Jim White, who has caught your eye as you've watched these first four practices of camp? Well, Adam Humphreys, it seems like every time you look up, he's catching another pass. He gets open in a hurry. Some of these red zone periods where he's going one-on-one -on -one against the defender in tight space, he has put on some great moves. I mean, it's so much that these guys obviously are, are fired up to face him to figure out a way to slow him down. I think some of it can be attributed to work they've done this offseason. Humphreys traveled to Oregon just a couple of days before camp started, spent some time with Marcus Mariota. They golfed together. It had Meals together, spend a lot of time together. They've already developed a really strong bond, and I think you're seeing that early on in camp. Coach Wells has caught your eye. You know what? I've been watching Rashawn Evans since we came out there, and this is important for this reason. Rashawn Evans has to take a step like we saw Jayon Brown take in his second season for him to be able to, to recognize what he needs to do and also to be a movable piece in Dean Pease's defense. You can't start to move a player until he knows what to do in one spot. He's learning now that behind the ball stuff. It looks like he's ahead of blocks now. I've coached linebackers long enough in this league to know I can tell when their eyes are right. He's got his eyes right now. He's got all the requisite skills. And now I want to see him develop those throughout this preseason. And this, and this training camp is a great spot to start. I'm staying in the 2018 draft class with Harold Landry. Coach Mack likes to call guys dudes. Harold Landry looks like a dude now totally different looking player on the field. Yes, he's bulked up. Yes, he, you know, stature wise, he's carrying himself differently, but you're seeing him beat blocks rushing the passer. You're seeing him on the edge making things happen. Harold Landry looks like a guy who expects himself to be a difference maker in year two. Coach Mack, I want to send this question to you first. What looks different about this training camp in Mike Vrabel's second year as a head coach? Well, I mean, I've been a head coach, and I know in that second year, you just feel more that all your cleats are in the ground. And by, when I say that, I mean this. First of all, Mike Vrabel knows this building now. He knows, he knows the people in the building. He knows everything is taken care of around him. He and, and Amy Adams Strunk and, and John Robinson are in such lockstep that what I see out here now is he has already had some different formats in his practice. You've seen him implement red zone very, very early for two reasons. Red zone is vitally important as close as games are in this league. And plus, he's taking some stress off his players' legs early on, you know, as we're going on. And the other thing that I see him, he is now intricately involved in every position group. I mean, hands-on coaching every position group. It's hard for a first-year coach to do that because everything else is swirling around you. 
He is more comfortable in his own skin. Mike Vrabel is a guy that's always been comfortable in his skin. Now he looks really comfortable as his head coach. I like the way he handles this. For me, it's more guys can catch the football. We thought this was going to be the case, but the first four practices have proven that Marcus Mariota does have more and better options. Corey Davis is better. Taewon Taylor is better. Tajay Sharp is better. All of those guys are performing to a higher level. Adam Humphreys being added to the mix is a big deal. We haven't even really seen A.J. Brown yet. Delaney Walker's back. There are several backs who can catch the football. All of a sudden, this area where we're kind of wondering a year ago, do you have the right mix of guys in the passing game? I think that's the biggest difference this year is the Titans have more guys who are weapons in the passing game that they've had in recent years. Ken? Yeah, I'm going to piggyback off Mike. I mean, I think what's different is Arthur Smith and just how he carries himself. I hear him now. You know, last year at training camp, he was kind of a quieter guy. Titans coach went about his business. This time, you can hear his voice travel out there. He gets upset and will kind of correct guys as practice goes on to finish plays. Make sure you're precise in what you're doing out there. And I think we're going to see more and more of that as he gets more comfortable in his new position. We look forward to seeing you guys out on the practice field tomorrow. Thank you so much for all of your insight. Tomorrow's practice at St. Thomas Sports Park is open to the public and it begins at 9.45 a.m. We hope to see all of you out there. For Mike Keith, Jim White, and Coach Mack, I'm Amy Wells, and this is Titans Today, fueled by Gatorade.